She had spent her entire life like most dogs of her size and breed do, trapped behind a fence for years in an industrial suburb of Athens, Greece, looking at the outside world as an enemy. One day she was simply moved to the other side of the fence on the street, sick, exhausted and hungry, left to survive on her own, to satisfy her hunger, to quench her thirst and to find a quiet place to rest. She was 12 years old. She wandered around the neighborhood for days until she finally found shelter in the offices of a company. She just went inside, lied on the floor and slept as if she hadn't slept for days. And how could you explain to her that the comfort and the warmth she found was only temporary? and that after the office was closed for the day, she would need to go back on the streets. How could you explain to her that she was simply too big to fit anywhere, that she belonged outside simply because of her size? I picked her up that afternoon, determined to find a place for her anywhere but the street. She looked like she was waiting for me, and in a way maybe she was. As I went inside, she lifted her head and looked at me like she was saying, What took you so long? When I put the leash on, she just stood up and followed me, as if this was what she was supposed to do, even though she had never met me before. And that proud, gorgeous animal got into my car and drove with me on the back seat for about an hour, without making a sound. She never left my side while we were at the vet's waiting room. She rested her giant head in my arms and kept poking me with her paw every time I stopped petting. I named her Tina, and even though I had only met her an hour ago, I could already see into her twelve-year-old soul, the soul that was there only to offer love to humans, the kind of love that puts a huge smile on your face and makes you want to stand by her side forever. Mange is exhausting for dogs. That horrible itch keeps them sleepless for entire nights as they are trapped in a body full of wounds that never lets them rest. So after she got her first shot and the parasites started dying, Tina spent days and days just sleeping. I used to visit her at the dog pension and watch her sleep as she grew stronger and healthier, we started taking walks outside. Her calm temper, her droopy eyes and that silly smile on her face that started appearing after a couple of weeks made me want to spend as much time with her as possible. She was so easy and so funny to be around. Wherever she went, she would just adjust perfectly as long as she was loved and petted. She had her whole life turned around at the age of 12, and yet she felt at home everywhere, whether it was a dog pension, Linda's house, and finally my small apartment. Fostering Tina was like being in a calm, quiet dream. I used to call her Miss Sleeps a lot, and watch her for hours, just laying there, enjoying the comfort of her bed. I have never taken such long and calm walks as the ones I took with her. I wasn't really walking her, we just walked together. We wandered around the city like we were the last two creatures on earth. Very often I would just let her guide me, and I realized that where she wanted to be was where people were. Her size made it so difficult for them to realize what her soul was really made of, and as she would walk towards them, most of them would walk away. I spent hours and hours crying for Tina's loneliness, unable to explain to her why the ones she needed so much kept avoiding her. But after a couple of weeks, she stopped being the huge, scary dog and became the entire neighborhood's pet. Her kind, loving soul managed to break down fears and stereotypes and our walks started including her favorite petting places where she was expected and loved by people, the people she adored. 
After living in a yard for 12 years, Tina could finally make humans realize who she was. The perfect companion, the perfect pet, the perfect soul. She even learned to coexist with my three dogs, to respect the rules of the house, and she even made a couple of dog friends. Against all odds, despite her age and her background, Tina thrived. She learned everything from scratch, as if she was a puppy, and embraced her new life as if this was what she was always made for. I never looked for a big enough house for Tina, nor for a garden or a yard, because all she needed was a big enough heart that would love her unconditionally for the rest of her life. And among all the people who kept believing that their houses and their gardens were too small for a dog like her, there was one girl who saw Tina as a perfect pet for her small apartment in Germany. And as I started preparing myself to let her go, Luisa started preparing her house to welcome that huge puppy she had fallen in love with. She never wondered if she would fit or not because she knew that all that Tina needed was a big enough place in her heart. And in that small apartment, 2,000 kilometers away from where she spent her entire life, Tina is finally who she always wanted to be. She is Luisa's little puppy, who learned to play with toys and take long walks in the forest and make new friends and sit for a treat and sleep in her huge bed underneath a pink sign with her name on it, a name she was given at 12. Luisa calls her Miss Smarty Pants because she learns so fast. Her tired, huge body might seem like an obstacle sometimes, but her soul is still so young, so fresh, so willing to learn and to teach. For dogs, time does not matter. They don't look back at the years they have lost with resentment, nor do they fear that their future will not be as long as they want it to be. Dogs leave the present, and when Tina plays or cuddles with Luisa or takes her walks in the park, she is 100% there, 100% happy, and she is living proof that she was never too big for this world, more like the other way around. Our world and our hearts were too small for her, and she spent 12 years trapped until she finally broke free.